Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to build a Cupertino styled date and time picker. So you may remember from a while back that I showed you how to build a date picker that's an Android styled type of date picker that just shows up and you can pick date and whatever. Today we're going to look at the similar thing, it's just the iOS type of style. And also this iOS styled date picker he has a certain how to call it advantage because you can also pick time with it and with the ordinary date picker you could not do that so let me just build out a simple date picker and set its initial time to be this date time we have over here that has a default value of now let me just build out a cupertino date picker Okay, and also I forgot to mention if you're going to use Cupertino styled widgets, you need to import the Cupertino library over here. So let's set the initial date to be current date and time. And on date time changed, let's just for now set that date and time with set state. Actually, like this. And also let's print out the changed date and time. Over here, move it up a little, use this one, and say print. Right, so as you can see, we're getting this error that says bottom overflowed by infinity pixels. And that's because we have this date picker inside of a column, which is not limiting the height. If I removed the column, let's see what happens. We get the date picker, but it's over the whole screen. And if we want to limit its height to something, we can just wrap it in a sized box. So let me do that. Say sized box. And say that the height is equal to 200. And now it's a lot smaller, a lot slimmer. And this of course depends on what you want to do. If you want to have a whole page dedicated to the date picker, then you can obviously do that. But as you can see, it it looks pretty nice, it works very well. And since we are printing the date time, let me go over to the debug console and you can see that all of this is being printed out. So let me go back to the emulator and as I change the date and time over here, we're getting it changed over here. Right, so over here you may be able to see that we have a couple of more properties. We have this used 24 hour format property that if you look over here, we can set that to be false. And that's I think the default value and then we get to choose between AM and PM. But if we set it to be equal to true and save this, then we don't get that, but we get the 24 hour format. So yeah, and we can also set the minimum date and the maximum date and whatever. And so yeah, we have this mode, I don't know what it actually is. Oh, we have this, we can choose only the date, which is pretty neat. We can choose date and time. So yeah, that's pretty neat, I think. I mean, I think that over here default is date and time, so yeah. And I don't know, there's not that much more to it. We can put a button below. It's going to say raise the button. And that it's going to have some text that will allow us to confirm our selection. And in there we'll just display a dialog that says you chose this and this date. So yeah, let me save this. Go over here. And for some reason our app is not being updated. So let me restart it as a whole. Alright, so now we get what we got previously. So let's say this and yeah. So we can easily extract what we selected and display it in some other way. And that's not there's not that much to it. It's pretty simple actually. It has pretty nice UI. And if you're building an app that follows more of that iOS style of you know displaying, this Cupertino daytime picker is really going to come in handy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you next time.